Hello guys, today we are going to be discussing the solution to a very interesting problem from 2014 IPHO and this is problem 1 and this is one of the mini problems in the problem 1 IPHO generally tends or sometimes tends to have uh, one problem with three completely different problems, three or four completely different problems and each of them are very hard themselves but they're mini problems as like they can be one entire problem because they're not hard enough for that but each problem is still very hard to solve and requires some uh, type of thinking before you know it's attempting the problem so this is one of the problems this is the part a mini problem of problem one of ipho 2014 and you guys can give it a read uh, try to solve it and when you're done I'll give a solution and I'll link down the official solution which is slightly different than mine's and I, that's why I would like to share the solution with you guys to have a more general perspective on how to solve these types of problems all right so I assume that you guys have now read the problem tried it and now I'm going to discuss the solution with you guys so let us first draw the symmetry axis about the cylinder consider when the mass transverses slightly down and travels through an angle of warfi here would be better if we wrote this about the horizontal symmetry axis so it travels down angle of warfi down there so the there's going to be a normal force that is directed radi radially inwards to this angle which we all call n of r phi the main goal of this solution is that we want to calculate the angular impulse that is onto the bigger mass which is the cylinder and that's because in other cases the normal force will be considered as an action-reaction force. So taking t uh, the angular impulse of the normal force doesn't really make sense. But when you take the angular impulse due to the normal force on the bigger mass, that makes sense because since we're taking it all about the rim, the moment arm of the friction force is going to be zero. There's going to be no contribution to that. And we don't really take into effect. And so that's why we only take into effect of the normal force on the cylinder and this is effectively what speeds up or accelerates the cylinder so let's look at our general angular impulse equation which we write as the vector quantity of the angular momentum changes with respect to time of a time varying torque with times dt and this is between two different times t1 and t2 so in this case torque changes with respect to angle and angle is a function of time and we know that the moment arm of this is going to be n cosine of r phi so we write from time 0 to t and t will be when the mass hits the very bottom the, ink, the torque due to due onto the bigger mass is n of r phi r cosine of r phi dt since we're taking the angular impulse about the bottom mass we should use Steiner's theorem to find the moment of inertia about the rim of this mass so Steiner's theorem about rim We can say that about the symmetry axis of a cylinder, whole cylinder, the moment of inertia is going to be mr squared, and we're moving out towards the distance of r. So that's going to be mr squared plus another mr squared is equal to 2 mr squared, and this is our moment of inertia. Angular momentum is given as i omega, so we can say that. 2 mr squared 
omega is equal to integral of n of r phi r cosine of r phi dt. So we can take out r from here, r from here, and now this integral won't really help us unless we find another way to express it. So on the bigger mass, this normal force is going to be effectively the force that accelerates it and in the horizontal direction. So ma. So we can say that uh, mv dot, and this is going to be the force that is directed onto the smaller mass, is equal to n of r phi cosine of r phi. And note that v dot is also the same thing as dv dt. So that implies that mv, or the impulse, we could cite it as that, is equal to the integral of n of r phi cosine of r phi dt. So now we put this into our equation and we get 2 m r omega is equal to m of mv. The cylinder is going to be rotating without slipping. So, and let us say that the cylinder is moving with, uh, with a velocity of u. Since it's moving without slipping, we can replace u with r omega. So 2m to big M u is equal to mv. And that's our first equation. And this equation will be important for later times. But now let us consider when the mass goes all the way to the bottom. So now it's at the bottom. We're going to conserve energy. So the mass is initially at a height r. And we're going back to our frame, initial frame of reference. So now we're no longer in the frame of the cylinder. We're back in the frame of the mass. And what we're going to write is that mg r, mg big r, which is the initial potential energy, converts entirely into kinetic energy of the smaller mass and the kinetic energy which includes the rotational analog of energy and also the translational analog of the bigger cylinder. So since it's rolling without slipping and the moment of inertia is mr squared, we can say that this is the same thing as mu squared. So we know that u essentially is going to be m over 2m v. So we now conserve energy. To get this type of equation, and now we can effectively solve for the velocity of the mass when it reaches the bottom of the cylinder. So, how we do this is that let's first factor out one half m v squared from both sides. So now we have this, we can now divide through and, and to cross out the m here and the m here. So we get 2g r over 1 plus m over 2m is equal to v squared. If we multiply both sides by 2 big M over m, on the numerator and the denominator, the numerator and denominator, we multiply by 2 big M over M, and that will give us that 
v is equal to the square root of 4g r m over m plus 2 big m and this is the same thing as 2 g r m g r big m g r over m plus 2 big m so note that we have that u is equal to mv over 2 big m so because of this that means that u is equal to m over m m over big m m big m g r over m plus 2 big m so we have the velocity v and the velocity u of the cylinder when it reaches the very bottom so if you move into the relative velocity frame of both the mass and the cylinder so when so we can consider a frame that moves left toward u so the cylinder remains relative um about zero its motion is zero since we're moving in a frame that goes u then the velocity of the mass is going to be v plus u and this is the relative velocity and this mass is going to be rolling without slipping about the cylinder that's a pretty big color so it's going to be rolling without slipping about the cylinder and and it's, it's so it's going to be in circular motion so that means that we can write f as a force that is directed inwards be and between the puck and the cylinder is equal to mg which is the mass which is the direction of gravity force and as well as the centripetal force which is mv relative velocity squared over r so this gives us mg plus mv relative squared over r and we can rewrite this as times So this is the force and we can simplify this actually quite a lot by noting that with a with a couple of simplifications this can be simplified uh into because note that we can square this part we can square this and we can square this and then we can add two plus this and this and all of these will become unsquared so there will be no square roots inside the expression and upon further simplification after that we can obtain the equation 3mg plus little m squared over big m g and this can be factored out so that it becomes mg of 3 plus m over big m g and this is our answer so i hope you guys found that problem to be very fun and please like and subscribe share with your friends zoo prep is going to be very good we're going to be seeing lots of videos for you guys 
So, yeah, see you guys.